The movie begins, and we see a black screen with a narration of a man who talks about his family and how there was something different about them. His mom thought she was being followed her whole life, and he tells an incident where his mom picked up a fight with a man who pointed a camera at them. The man said something to his mom, ran, and jumped in front of a car. The man says that he checked the camera after the body was taken away and saw thousands of photos of his family and mom on it. A female voice asks him if he can send those pictures. He says they gave the camera to the cops, but the records of this stalker went missing like he never existed. The woman sighs, commenting that he has no evidence, and he goes on a rant about how this stalker was an agent from the future, and he is the chosen one. When the lady does not believe him, he insults her and calls her a fraud. He talks about her last gig, and it gives the impression she did something wrong. She then cuts off the call. As the conversation was going, the screen became clearer, and now we can see a close-up of a microphone. It turns out it was a podcast, and the interviewer is a disgraced journalist. She records an apology, and we learn that in her previous case, she failed to corroborate evidence and falsely accused someone, costing her career. She has begun podcasting about unsolved mysteries in the hopes of resuming her career. She names her podcast Beyond Believable. A man named Tyler is helping her and has hired her, and she records an introduction and sends it to him. She receives an email titled The Truth Will Out from an anonymous source about a story regarding The Brick, and the email has contact information and a picture of Flora Mae King. She contacts Flora Mae and asks her about The Brick. Hearing about it, Flora Mae goes silent and is hesitant to talk, but the interviewer tells her that it will be quick and she will have to just answer some questions. Flora Mae says that The Brick was such a long time ago. It was like something she had never seen before and it changed her life. She starts to get irritated, but the interviewer calms her down. Flora Mae says that it happened some 20 years ago. She used to be a maid and worked for a very wealthy family who were very generous to her and even paid for her daughter's scholarship. But one day, something unexplainable happened. One day, she found their dining table scratched and their furniture damaged. The family thought her daughter Paula did it and turned on them. After this incident, Flora Mae received a black brick, but she doesn't remember how. The brick was darker than anything she had ever seen and very heavy. When she held the brick, she felt some strange power, but the family's kid took it, and her father sold it to some art collector as compensation for damages done by Paula and fired her. The interviewer gets the name of the collector from Flora Mae and looks him up on the internet. The collector is Klaus Lang. Paula hears this conversation in the background, scolds her mom, and cuts the call. The interviewer gets a voicemail from her parents. While her parents are away, she is staying at their large home to record this podcast. She calls Lang's Contemporary Gallery, a German-based art collector who purchased the brick from Flora Mai. He confirms that this object exists. He says that he also received a brick when he was very young. He got fascinated by it and now has several of them, each exactly the same. He got them scanned and found that the interior of each brick was filled with hundreds of symbols folded into each other. Each brick has its own unique symbols. He says that his brick symbols remind him of a scar he had as a boy. He thinks the brick is speaking directly to him and only to him. He tells her that before receiving the brick, he had a strange vision where he saw his dead brother as a strange, tall, ugly figure. And he thinks this vision is related to the brick, which also implies that the brick is of alien origin. He says that when he held it, he felt someone from far away wanted to talk to him. The interviewer does not trust him, and he offers to sell a brick to her to convince her, but she refuses. Before cutting the call, she informs him that Flora May's brick was sold to him without permission from her, and that the family he bought it from took it from Flora May. But he shows no concern about it. He just states that he paid for it fairly. After the call, she hears the recording of both calls from Flora May and Klaus to make sense of everything. She calls a man named Scott and talks to him about this incident and the brick. They both laugh at the absurdity of this. She is planning to drop the story and not send it to Tyler. She comments that Tyler will fire her, and Scott stresses that she needs rest. He suggests that she take a break, but she says that she needs a story in order to keep her job. They talk about the Langley case, which got the interviewer in this condition, and her comments reveal that her article was true, but she was framed and discredited. She tells Scott that Langley's supporters are gathering in front of her apartment, so she is at her parents' house. She gets determined to get a story and gets back to the recordings. She analyzes the recording, then goes on the microphone and talks about her experience with Flora Mai and Klaus. In the end, she urges anyone with any related information about the brick to come forward.
She then sends this recording to Tyler and she receives a response from Tyler that he is going to publish it. The next day she's having breakfast when she receives a message from Tyler about her podcast blowing up. In her inbox, there are multiple messages related to the brick. She contacts another person who has a black brick, Laura Sully, who also had similar visions just before receiving the brick. In her vision, she feels compelled to jump from the window of her high-rise office, but she always wakes up before hitting the ground. After this vision, she got the brick, but just like the others, she doesn't disclose how she got it, just comments that she is not allowed to say that. The interviewer gets visibly confused by this and asks her to send a picture of the brick, and Laura dismisses the request and tells her that the brick warns her of something awful coming. Just before Laura cuts the call, she asks the interviewer for help and says that she wants to stop living like this. After the call ends, Laura sends a picture of the brick to the interviewer. Flora May calls after listening to the podcast, and she is upset at the interviewer for changing her words. She starts getting more calls about the brick, and a man calls her and tells her that his grandfather also received a brick, and he also had visions. The man says that the brick is gone, but his grandfather has changed, like he's been replaced by something else. He also tells her that the brick spreads through word of mouth and urges the interviewer to stop the podcast. He warns her that she is in danger, and the brick can come to her too. After hearing this, she goes online to research the matter and emails a journalist who had an article about a similar phenomenon. She receives the scans from Klaus and sends them to Scott, who is a linguistics professor at MIT. Scott tells her it's unique, and he also suggests that Klaus may be making this up. She believes that this is real, and Scott tells her that he does not recognize the symbols. The interviewer comes up with the theory that these symbols are related to the person who gets the brick. Scott asks her to think about whether she really believes it or is fooling herself for a story. That night, she finds a package with a USB stick inside it. On it, there is a video of a little girl celebrating her birthday, and in the video, the little girl mentions that she got a black brick in her gifts. She calls her dad, but he is not available, and she leaves a message. She notices some markings on the shredded paper in the package, and when put together, it makes a symbol similar to one from the brick. She calls Klaus and questions him whether he is playing with her. The video is actually hers on her birthday party when she was a little girl, and she thinks Klaus is behind all this. Klaus refuses to have knowledge of it. She asks him to show her a brick to prove they are real. Klaus video calls her from his vault, and he has dozens of bricks and shows that to her. He starts having visions during this call and starts acting weird. And something strange happens. She records the call and edits her podcast and sends it to Tyler. She falls asleep while working and is awoken by a phone call from Shiloh Loudon, the journalist she emailed. Shiloh informs her of a government investigation into a neurological illness accompanied by unexplained objects in the 1980s. The government believes it to be some Russian tactics. One important fact was that in 70% of people, the disease developed after they heard about it. She says that if her article is the same as the interviewer's story, then she needs to be careful because that means the brick is coming for her and she will be infected soon. They have a duty to protect the public and not everything needs to be published so that they can prevent further spread. In a way, she tells her to drop the podcast. Later, Scott calls to check up on her and they argue. She searches on the internet for the subject title of the original email from the anonymous sender who told her to investigate this story, which is a passage from the book Merchant of Venice. She reads the book that is in her parents' house and finds property of FK written on it. She watches the video and learns that Flora May used to work for her parents. She thinks Flora May is plotting this and calls her to argue with her. She also talks to Paula, who blames her for sabotaging her life because of her baseless claims that she destroyed the table and the furniture. She accuses her of being jealous because her parents paid attention to Paula and not her. The interviewer says she doesn't remember. Paula tells her to get things right and tell the truth. She cuts the call after they tell her to never contact them again. She calls her father and asks him to tell the truth, and he tells her the same story, that he took the brick to cover the cost of the damage Paula caused. The interviewer admits to her dad about snitching that Paula damaged the furniture, and they called the cops who charged Florame, and they took the brick as compensation and fired Florame for their own safety, not realizing that his own daughter lied about who actually did the damage. It is revealed that the interviewer did the damage. Her father tells her they don't have to talk about it, and he gets angry when he figures out she is recording this. He tells her to drop this and heal instead of dragging back the past, and he tells her to keep it a secret as this can be so damaging to her family and her. 
After cutting the call, she sees the scratch mark on the dining table, which is the same as the one inside Flora May's brick and the package. She deletes her father's recording, and she starts having pain in her abdomen. She feels like vomiting. And when she goes to the washroom, a black brick comes out of her mouth. She brings a hammer and breaks the brick into pieces. She comes out and sits at the table. She hears a sound from the bathroom, and when she goes to check, she sees a doppelganger of her standing there. She returns to the table and picks up the recorder as the doppelganger also comes out and sits opposite her. The interviewer puts the recorder down and starts to question the doppelganger. The doppelganger says nothing and picks up and crushes the recorder in her hand as if it was made of paper. The interviewer gets scared, runs out in the woods, and hides on the lakeside, but the doppelganger finds her. They start to fight and the struggle becomes unclear who is who. One kills the other, puts some rocks in her clothes, and throws the body in the lake. The survivor returns home and starts to record a podcast as the screen again transitions to black. The movie ends and we are left to ponder who survived, the interviewer or the doppelganger. That's all for today, guys. Come back again for another Recap Nest sci-fi story. Check these two sci-fi stories. You might like them too. See you next time.